What are options to treat an MS attack besides steroids? Howdy! My name is Aaron Boster. I'm an MS neurologist in Columbus, Ohio. And in this video, I'm going to be answering that exact question. Now, don't turn away because all of that starts right now. Hey! Howdy! Thanks for learning about MS with me, Aaron Boster. In this video, I want to address Jill's question. What are other options to treat a relapse beyond steroids because she responds poorly? That is a great question. Let's grab pen and paper and jump in. A multiple sclerosis attack, a flare, an exacerbation, a relapse, it's all the same thing, is a situation where the immune system attacks part of the supercomputer, the brain, the optic nerves, or the superhighway, the spinal cord, and causes an area of your nervous system to short circuit and you lose a neurological function. If the inflammatory attack occurs in the optic nerve, you're not gonna see very well. If it occurs in the part of the brain that controls sensation on one side of your face, you may be numb and tingly. If it occurs in the spinal cord, the superhighway, you may be numb or weak from that level down. When you try to treat an MS attack, we typically use high dose corticosteroids to quell the inflammation and allow the return of the neurological function. The most common way that we do this is by giving an IV infusion in the vein of a medicine called solumedrol. And we typically use really, really high doses so that we can penetrate the central compartment. It's not uncommon that we would treat someone with one gram, that's a thousand milligrams, of IV solumedrol for three or even five days. Now, I oftentimes refer to steroids as a necessary evil. Necessary because I want to hasten your recovery and give you back your vision. Evil because there are a lot of side effects. And it's not uncommon that people struggle to tolerate steroids. So in this video, I wanna spend a few minutes sharing with you some different techniques, tricks, and tips to help someone tolerate or get through a steroid infusion or alternatives if we really can't do that. The first question to consider is why are we having difficulty tolerating the steroids? Because if we can identify what exactly the tolerability issue is, we might be able to use lotions and potions to get you through it safely. I'll give you a few examples. I have many patients where nature is too generous and they have both MS and they have diabetes. And so giving them high dose steroids is really challenging because it skyrockets their sugars. We will oftentimes work with their primary care doctor and have them administer what's called a sliding scale of insulin, where after the steroid, they check their sugars throughout the day and they adjust their insulin accordingly and it helps them get through that difficult time. Sometimes it's not easy for a patient to work with a PCP like that. And in serious circumstances, we may even admit them into the hospital so that expert nurses and doctors can help navigate their sugars while they get their steroids. And that's just one example. Another example is steroids can really upset your tummy. They can cause gastritis, which can be very, very unpleasant. And we can prescribe medicines like omeprazole, things like Prilosec. There's even over-the-counter medicines that we can take twice a day during the steroids to help them not have difficulties with gastritis. Another very, very common issue with tolerability is steroids amp you up. And in some cases, it can make it nearly impossible to fall asleep at night. Now, in these circumstances, we can use something like a Benadryl or something like a prescription sleep aid just during the time of the steroids to help them get through that difficult period. I also have patients that will experience massive irritability to the extent that their family doesn't want to be around them because they're so difficult to deal with when they're on steroids. I always like to remind them that's my fault, not theirs. And if we can be planful, the patient might quite literally go somewhere else for three days while they're going through their steroids so that they're not difficult with their family. My point here is if we can clarify with you what exactly the tolerability problem is, sometimes we can game out how to make that tolerable. There are situations where steroids simply cannot be given. And in those circumstances, we can turn to a different medicine called ACTH. Now, ACTH is actually a hormone made in the brain. And it travels to your adrenal glands, which sit on top of your kidneys, 
and instruct your adrenal glands to make their own steroids. That's how the human body makes steroids. And so we can collect ACTH from harvested from slaughterhouses with pigs and it's collected and sterilized so it's very safe and we can inject the ACTH into your body and it does the same thing. It goes to your adrenal glands and tells your adrenal glands to pump out steroids. The advantage here is the total amount of steroid that your body sees is much less than when we give IV solumedrol, but the impact can be every bit as effective as when you use uh, high dose steroids. Now this is actually a very expensive treatment and sometimes insurance is very, very reluctant to approve it. It's also a self-administered injection, which is given daily, typically for three to five days. And this is an alternative that we can consider when steroids really are off the table. I feel like it's important to keep in mind that the goal of MS treatment is to prevent relapses from occurring. That's one of the reasons that we use disease-modifying therapies. If a DMT is working well, we're not gonna suffer from relapses. If you'd like to learn more about MS DMTs, Click the video that's on your screen right now.